Hi everyone, and in this video I'm going to show you my newest uh, sim practice assignment for terminology. I used to have students make up their own models and then sort of think about the degrees of freedom for this section, but since I'm trying to build this completely integrated course into R, I have restructured this assignment so it's more guided. And so I've got the assignment open here in our Learn R tutorial, which I have another video about if you want to learn how to use these. And I'm just going to kind of skip over the like learning outcomes section. And then the video, once I record it, will be right here. And let's get into the actual exercises. So if you're having a student do, or if you're a student doing the um, Learn R version, you just type in your name here. And these come up in red because I can't figure out how to make them change, but don't freak out, it's fine. So I'm at next. Okay. And so in this example, what I've done is taken one of the tutorial examples from Levon's website, which is a really great resource, and just pasted it in here. So this is kind of a complex model that we're going to see if we can dissect for the different terms that you would have learned in the terminology lecture and um, the different issues that are associated with identification. So let's get started. Now, it says um, here that, you know, at this point in the course, we wouldn't have covered how to write one of these, but I've included the code just so that you can kind of start to see how these sections are, are written in Levon, and we'll start covering those pretty soon, as in next week. So let's try some of the questions. So given this model diagram, let's scroll down here, it says how many latent variables are in the model? Well, remember latent variables are represented with a circle, so we just count the number of circles. One, two, three. Okay. Now if I enter three here, it's going to actually tell me I got the answer right. If you type the word three out, it's just going to give you feedback that the answer should be three. All right, we're going to quit Slack real quick or it will continue to beep. Okay. Moving on, I thought I closed everything, never wins. Okay, the next question is how many manifest variables are in the model? Remember that manifest variables or measured variables are the squares, so we just count those. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> That's 11, I think. So let me show you how it goes if you get it wrong, so to speak. As it just gives you the answer. So there are 11 squares. What would I label the independent 60 for this political example predicting x1, 2, and 3? Okay, so let's go back up up here. This little section, what kind of label would I give that? Or well, there's two big parts to these types of models, the measurement model and the structural model. So that section is called the measurement model. Okay, it's like a little mini confirmatory factor analysis, which we'll get to in a couple of weeks as well. Now, if I had capitalized measure here, measurement, it would have given me the answer is correct. But it's okay because the answers are given to you. It's just going to give you feedback if you don't spell it quite the same way. Now, in contrast, what is independent 60 here? Predicting demo demographics, I think, 60 and 65. Okay, well, or is it demographics or it might be dims like political party? I don't remember. Um, anyway, so what is this little section here? Well, that's the structural half of the model where the regressions are occurring. Is independent 60 an endogenous or exogenous variable? Well, endogenous variables have the arrow coming into them. Exogenous variables have the arrows going out of them. They're exiting. So this looks like an exogenous variable because all the arrows are exiting. And then now is dim 60 endogenous or exogenous? Well, this is a bit of a cheat question, honestly, because it's both. So it's endogenous for this predictive relationship and exogenous. So it's a little bit of both. So the answer is actually both. So a little bit of a cheat question there, it's both. All right, so that's just kind of some basic terminology. Let's think about identification now, which is arguably one of the hard things to learn when you first get started. 
because um, it's not always obvious in the model pictures, if I look at this picture, everything that's being estimated, right? Because we often draw these pictures without all of the residual arrows on them, just for clarity's sake. And that's why I always really like, if I'm going to be working in R, to draw these models just simply with some paths. And you'll learn how to do that in this course and how to edit these and make them prettier. Um, because while it doesn't quite look like the picture that um, they drew for the Levon website, it can at least show me all of the things that are being estimated. And here's why they're often not presented on pictures, because this gets kind of difficult to read. And once you start adding numbers to that, it gets even more, more difficult. So I just printed it out. And let's see if we can answer these questions. How many variances, the error or latent variables, are um, error variances or variances on the latent variables are being estimated? For that, we're going to count the double headed arrows. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. How many regressions are being estimated? Now, this is not a trick question, but a bit different. So we're going to look for the single headed arrows. But remember that regressions are um, not part of the measurement model. So while all of these are single headed arrows, those are going to be called loadings. So the regressions are only here in the structural part. So one, two, three. Okay. And if you don't put that in as a number, it will remind you, hey, the other ones are called loadings. All right, so how many loadings are being estimated? Well, it's very tempting to count all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, which is the number of manifest variables that we have. But for identification and scaling that marker variable section of the lecture, that's what this dotted line means. So to have our model be identified, we have to set some of them. So they're no longer being estimated, they're fixed. And that's what the dotted line is. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, how many covariances are there? It's a little difficult to read in this picture, so I always just read, like the covariances are these double-headed arrows across, across variables instead of just within one variable. And since there's a, a few of them, what I always do is count the number of, of arrowheads that are on one particular side because it does place them. Um, so like it's always on the right over here and on the left over here. So one, two, three, four, five. I think there are six. I can't count. One, two, three. Oh, there's two here. Four, five, six. A, maybe a little bit easier to see in the picture. Oop, not sick. Six. Okay. How many possible parameters can I estimate? All right, so we're going to use this formula of, of manifest variables times manifest plus one divided by two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So eleven times twelve divided by two. 66. Okay. If you don't type 66, I can't edit it because I got it right. If you don't type 66, it shows you the formula. How many actual parameters am I estimating? So this is possible versus actual. Okay, so we would add up our all of our numbers, okay, which I won't make you suffer through as 31. Just want to show you the answer. So it shows me how I got that number. So that's loadings plus regressions plus covariances plus variances. Now we would subtract 66 minus 31, 34. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, it's 35. Oh, math is hard. <laughs> you know what? I'll leave it. I got it wrong. It's all right. And that's what it says here. You can check your work. It's okay if you can't math today. <laughs> and then learning how to read these is the important part. So I didn't tell you that I had actually printed out the output down here at the bottom, but I can check. The number of free parameters here is going to match our number of estimated, our number of parameters we're actually estimating. 
It's a little confusing because it says free, so it kind of sounds like free means they're up for grabs, but what it really means is the number of parameters that you're gonna estimate. They are freely estimated is the way to think about it. Okay. Don't get number of observations confused. This is the number of rows in the data set. Um, degrees of freedom in, in structural equation models has nothing to do with sample size. Okay. And then here's degrees of freedom. And so the possible parameters is just the addition of the two. Now you could also come down here and use this to help you count. So the first one we looked at was variances, I think. And so I could count, there's 14 of these. And they do have the little dot in front of them when they're variances or covariances. Here's the number of regressions. So it's one, two, three. The number of loadings minus the marker variables, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the number of covariances, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So that's how, where I get all of my numbers from, so I'm trying to map here the picture onto the output. And you'll get a lot of pro uh, practice, practice, <laughs> not progress, you get a lot of practice with these because we'll start building models in the next section, starting with simple models with only manifest variables. So if you have to submit this, you can hit next, click generate a submission, and then copy all this and give it to your instructor, instructor uh, if this is what they want. So it has all of your answers that you typed in for it for all of those questions.